It's October 27th, 2019, and this is episode 13 of Plane Savers. Down Under. Now, following on from the last episode, which were pictures of the South Australian Aviation Museum, I also visited two other museums. One was Classic Jets at Parafield, and the other was Green Oak up in the Barossa Valley. Unfortunately, Classic Jets, as it was back in 2018, doesn't exist that way anymore. It's still there, but the last wide collection has had to be disposed of because I believe it was the health of the owner, um, or the owner's wife, necessitated the disposal of some of the aircraft. But... Um, one of the projects that's ongoing there is the restoration of a Corsair. So we'll go through and show you those photos. I'll also show you some photos of the Air Cobra that they restored and disposed of. So we'll do that. And then we'll go to Grenock, which is a small museum up in the Rossa, where you can go and have a look at aeroplanes and sip beautiful red and white wine, red preferably. So we'll go on and have a look at those. We start off with Classic Jets at uh, Parafield in um, northern suburbs of Adelaide. And the first photo is the, or what was recovered from the crash site in Vanuatu. And as you watch as we go through the pictures, you'll see what a drastic change is made from these early days. And the second photo is one of the prog in progress uh, parts of the restoration. We'll go through the photos of her as she stood in October 2018. As you can see past those early photos she's come to the stage where she's sitting on her under undercarriage. Much of the major fuselage work has been done also the the wings and that are on. Here is also a look at the Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wash engine, a mammoth engine. And here's a photo with a, the R2800 and one of the propeller blades. And one of the reasons the gull wing arrangement of the Corsair was because the propeller was so large driving that um, or being driven by that mammoth engine and it needed to be lifted up off the ground but still fit into carriers. So if you look at the undercarriage she sits at the bottom of the, the gull wing and the wings can still fold into position for carrier storage. Now here's a great view out of the cockpit looking over that really long nose and that mind you is not with the 2800 installed. So landing this aircraft on a carrier would certainly be a hand for you'd be looking down the side of that mammoth nose to try and line yourself up. And here are some of the flying services ready to be installed and also a jig for the hydraulics. And here is a good view of the top and bottom of the wings and you'll show the internal structure and how they're coming together. And now we move on to a man's passion for aviation. Lincoln Neschke had the Greenock Aviation Museum situated in the upper part of the beautiful Barossa and Clare Valleys where not only can you get your full of 
or feel of aviation, but beautiful wines, disgustingly good port, and beautiful food. Many of you may have heard of Lincoln or know of him. He has been collecting aircraft, aircraft engines, spares, ancillary equipment for decades and supplies to restorers and rebuilders parts to around the world and this is his hobby and this is his interest he's done it all himself I won't explain everything much of it you'll work out for yourself but we'll go through this because I thought it was a fabulous little museum attached to his property up in the valley There are a number of engines on display ranging from this Armstrong Siddeley Cheetah through Gypsy Majors and others right up to jet engines and Merlins. Uh, all on their proper stand, all well displayed. And here we have some of the framing and the cockpit and engine of a fairy battle. Behind the tail of the vampire there is a de Havilland dove that used to serve with the Royal New Zealand Air Force. And here are a range of photos, a number of different Wirraway fuselages and further builds on just from the bare fuselage so you can see how they're done. We've looked at Wirraways before, so that will be familiar to you. As we've said before, the Avro Anson display, that's displayed here uh, was a multi-faceted trainer. Multi-engine training for pilots, then training for navigators, air gunners, wireless operators. Including in these photos is a good picture of the Anson turret. Quite often there's more than one example or parts of one example of the of a different aircraft. Here is the nose section and of another Avro Anson. And yes, there is a de Havilland Mosquito here. You can get have a good look at this rather formidable aircraft, the Wooden Wonder. There's a lot of work gone into this one and obviously there's still a lot of more work to do. Like most of us, Lincoln is getting on in years, so I don't know who will take it over. I think his family is still interested in being heavily involved in his passion, so we never know in the future years where this mis mosquito will actually end up and what stage.
Lincoln also has an incredible display of models of, of aircraft. Not only these ones hanging from the ceiling, but display case after display case. If I remember correctly, I'm sure he said he'd made every one of them, and there are literally hundreds of them. The Lincoln there that you see is probably about the last full Lincoln you'll see anywhere. But uh, right behind that photo of the Lincoln is the actual turret from an Avro Lincoln bomber. This is the cockpit section of a Airspeed Oxford, again a multi-engine trainer that was used by a number of air forces during the war. Just to show you something a little bit different, this is a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that has been used to power a Centurion tank. We move outside now and Lincoln has two aircraft on display outside. One is a English Electric Canberra and the other is a CAC, I think it's a Mark 21. Um, No, it's a Mark 23 Mustang. Well, something a little bit different. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Again, I'd like to thank the guys over at uh, Classic Jets who showed me around. It's a shame that things haven't gone on as everyone hoped, but other necessities in life take over. To Leonard Nischke, again, thanks very much for letting me wander around and have a good look at everything. All of these people are brilliant to deal with and see and talk to. Adelaide is great because everything's within about a two hour drive of the um, city and you can not only indulge your passion in aviation but as I said, drink fabulous wines and eat incredible foods. Till next time.